80% of millionaires are self-made. The majority of the world's wealthiest individuals weren't born into their wealth they created it. Part of their success comes from a culmination of daily habits that they've practiced for years. After understanding and applying these tried and tested habits to my own life, I've tripled my income, become more productive, and no longer waste my time or energy on the wrong things. So, in this video, I thought it'd be interesting to share with you what these habits are and how you can apply them to your own life but before we get into the video, I would like to say a very big thank you to all my 131 subscribers, you make the effort put into making these videos worthwhile so, let's get into it. Number 1, Great Minds Show Me Your Friends and I Will Show You Your Future. There are different variations of this quote, and I wanted to understand if there was evidence to back it up. I came across a study that showed if a friend of yours becomes obese, you are 45% more likely to gain weight over the next two to four years. More surprisingly, if a friend of your friend becomes obese, your likelihood of gaining weight increases by about 20%, even if you don't know that friend of a friend. This effect continues one more person out. The same was found for smoking and happiness you are more likely to be happy if your friend is happy. One of the worst disservice you can do to yourself, is to be friends with an unhappy soul or one who complains about virtually everything. Researchers looked for various explanations, but the most likely one appeared to be norms. If your friend or a friend of a friend is obese, that changes your perception of what is an acceptable body size, and your behavior changes accordingly. So. Your friends really are your future. The implication is that you don't just need to be deliberate about who you're spending the most time with, you also need to be mindful of your entire network and its influence on your life. Number 2. Push out of your comfort zone regularly starting a YouTube channel was one of the most challenging things I've ever put myself through. And I was absolutely petrified when I first posted my video. I had a million things running through my head, and it usually gets worse before it gets better. I eventually got to a point where I asked myself, do I just stop here, or do I write it out? I've learned that to get anywhere in life, you've got to brace yourself for awkward situations, uncomfortable moments, and embarrassment. You're going to be judged anyway. If you stick to your comfort zone and don't challenge yourself, even when you have every reason to stop, you will never know what you're capable of. And you'll be letting go of what could potentially be waiting for you on the other side. Number 3. Don't buy into FOMO fear of missing out. This one requires the most willpower and discipline, but if you apply it, it will pay off. We are constantly surrounded by images of our friends going out, going on their next big holiday, buying a new car, living their best life. And the constant pressure of these messages will make you feel that if you're not doing it, you're missing out. But if you constantly let yourself cave into these temporary moments, you may be sacrificing what you could potentially make of the rest of your life. You'll be sacrificing time that you could spend on working on yourself or your side hustle. There's a quote in the book Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, which states, The starting point of all achievements is desire. Weak desires bring weak results, just as a small fire makes a small amount of heat. Through this, he suggests that the intensity of our desires directly correlates with the results we get. Weak desires, weak results. Strong, burning desires can pave the way for bigger things in life. It's fine to cave into living your best life now and then, but it can be difficult to hear when the no-hustle culture is heavily promoted by people who are at the top of their game. Now that they've made it big, they can afford a team and delegate their work to achieve that so-called balance. But they once had that strong burning desire and made sacrifices during their climb that they don't talk about as much. I've learned that the best way to not let FOMO get the best of you is to find meaning in what you're doing and know that it's part of a bigger picture that you're creating for yourself. Every time I feel like FOMO is taking over, I remind myself why I'm doing what I'm doing. The strong desire and all the small sacrifices I make now will be worth it in the end. If you find any value in this video, please subscribe to the channel and leave a comment. I will be most grateful. Number 4 of the Millionaire Pyramid Whenever I'm at a door that doesn't seem to be opening for me, I think about the pyramid perspective mindset. It's understanding that the journey's difficulty is inversely proportional to the number of people who will reach the top. As you climb higher, the pyramid gets narrower. When difficulties show up, it's easy for the majority of people to give up. 
effectively, the crowd gets thinner and thinner towards the next level. The harder the journey, the higher up you get. The harder the challenges you face, but the fewer people there are to compete with, and so the rewards are bigger. Hurdles are part of the journey to the top. Everyone who's growing is going to fail at some point, and if you don't fail, you're not growing. What you do after failing is what differentiates successful people from the rest. So now, I remind myself that when things get tough, it's just a sign that I'm on the right path. Number 5. Focus on solutions. Now problems and habit that has been an absolute game changer in my life is focusing on solutions, not problems. What I've observed, especially among successful individuals, is this unshakable belief that every puzzle or problem has a solution. They believe everything, no matter how daunting, can be figured out. They ask themselves, how can I make this work for me? Whereas everyone else focuses on all the reasons why it won't work out, every excuse standing in their way. Worries are like sheep they flock together. When you start thinking about a problem, it quickly compiles into another problem, then another, and before you know it, you're overwhelmed with the potential for problems. Instead of playing the what-if game to think about all the additional problems one problem can cause, play it to think about the solutions. However serious your worries or problems may seem, and even if they keep you up at night, if you really analyze them, you'll find that every single problem has a solution. Number 6. Have a think day. This is one that I've been doing very recently, and it's helped me overcome mental blocks, making me mindful and sure that I'm heading in the right direction. In the 80s, Bill Gates, who founded Microsoft, began this Think Week annual tradition. He would seclude himself in a remote location, shut off all communication, and spend an entire week dedicated to reading, learning, and thinking. This approach became a key part of his life and process. Gates said, Think Week is a time when I can be creative and push my own thinking. It's a time to step outside the day-to-day -day demands of my job and really focus on the big picture. I haven't been able to commit to a whole week, but I have started doing Think Days at least once a month. I step away from all my work my phone, my laptop and seclude myself mentally. I spend an entire day reading, journaling thinking, and learning something new. When you do this, you give yourself space to zoom out and take a high-level view of your life, the bigger picture, and the direction you're going in. Sometimes, we're so caught up in the grind and working hard that we never really take a step back and ask, where am I going, and how can I get there more efficiently? This is one practice I highly recommend if you're able to. So, those are a few things I've been doing, and they've changed my life. I'm in a completely different position today than I was one year ago, and I attribute a lot of that to the habits I mentioned in this video. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video.